Beloved, this morning we're going to speak about the South, the South camp declaring the glory, the South shouting the glory of God and Messiah. It is to do with the prophecy that was placed in the 12 tribes, the sons of Jacob, who had prophetic meaning attached to their name. And God has placed them in a very particular order. The 12 were divided into groups of three, into almost four rows. We see the same thing that's associated more than likely with the, the a breastplate of the high priest where the 12 was divided into four and they were given they were ordained four rows or four corners of the earth four wind directions and in these corners they were to sleep and they were to to, to rest in this corner and also when they were rising and moving in the desert they were to move in a very particular order and by moving in that order they were actually shouting out the testimony, they proclaiming the glory of God and the testimony of Messiah. Therefore, the East Camp was the camp to start and to be first. And the East Camp started with Judah. No wonder, because Judah is the line that the Messiah would be born from. And the prophecy is all about having wisdom and knowledge of the identity of Messiah. So the first camp, and we've spoken about the first camp already. The East proclaimed the identity of Messiah as the Son of Man and the Son of God. It's in their names. They didn't even know what they were saying. But God, in their blindness, has blessed the Jewish people in ways that, <laughs> that shudders you. It's incredible, right? And this is now the second video we are with the South. It's the second video as we move around the compass clock all the way through to the north. The north was the last camp to depart and the final destination where we end up is in front of the throne of God, which is associated with the north and being in the north. And there we meet and stand before God. But after having knowledge of Messiah and then moving through the south camp, and that's where we are today. In the south camp, we will be seeing the tribes go by and the tribes, first the tribe will be moving and there is also an individual called the captain of the tribe that sets them in motion and the father of the captain. And in the names of the tribe, all right, in the name of the tribe and in the name of the father and in the name of the captain, in all three of them, there is prophecy of Messiah. And in this camp, the southern camp deals with the going down, the cut Messiah. It is in their names and they give the most perfect explanation of why Messiah needs to be cut, why God ordained the death and the, the rising testimony of Messiah, what is going on there. And Daniel also prophesied that Messiah the anointed would be cut off, but not for himself. And herein we find why God is helping mankind to know, and God is also very particularly helping his Jewish people to know the prophecy of the cut Messiah that is explained in the names and the tribes and the, and the, um, in the names of the tribes, the captains, and the fathers of the captains, they're explaining why Messiah is going down in the south. Also magnificent to think the south is the opposite of the north. Throne of God up with heaven in, in being in God's presence. South going down in his deathbed, in his grave. Messiah, the cut one, is given here in the testimony of the southern camp. As the tribes pass by, they speak, and the East has already spoken an incredible sentence. The East camp was crying out praise because their camp's name is just that. It's Judah, and it's crying praise. They identify Messiah in their names, in the names of the captains, and also in the fathers of the captains. And they identify Messiah as the Son of God, the Son of Man, born from a small town, um, being the saint one of God, being humble, being sacrificed, and being mighty strong to bring a great reward, which is exaltation into heaven. It's mind-blowing identification of Messiah that we have in the East, where they start to, to move. Now we are with the South. The group of tribes that pass by in the South all right, beloved, if you've missed that, consider watching the previous video on the proclamation of the glory of God coming from the east. Now we were the second row. We have the second camp. It is the southern camp. 
and this group is going to testify as they move by and the South carry on with the incredible sentence that's being spelled and proclaimed in the names of the Jewish people. And they are speaking of the cutting, of the going down of Messiah and they do it in the tribal name, in the father's name of the captains and also in, in the sons, the captains' names. It is also in the combination given according to how it's written in the Bible of tribe, captain, father, and tribe, captain, father, and again, the same order, all together, all of them, all nine of them, in the same order as they written, they spell a sentence that knocks you off your feet. It's incredible and it's the most magnificent explanation of why Messiah had to be cut and why God allowed this to carry on. It's it's. It's breathtaking. All right. So first, let's see. Imagine in your mind's eye as if you are sitting on a pavilion, you're looking down, you're seeing a formation of people starting to depart, starting to move by. And as they move by, they, in their name, are shouting something. They are writing a type of sentence, a writing, a proclamation. So the first one, all right, in the southern camp. Right, we've already heard the Eastern sentence shouting praise and identifying the Messiah as the Son of Man and the Son of God, right, coming to do great divine service willingly for us, going into his deathbed. Now we have the southern camp, and they follow on the heels. And the first one, it's the name of the camp that goes by, is Reuben. And Reuben's name means, behold, a son, all right? Who is the son? Who is the promised son? It goes back to Genesis. It's the son promised to mankind to be born from the seed of a woman to come and free us, to, to fight and war Satan on our behalf and to conquer us. They are speaking about the son, the Messiah, okay? The one that is being identified by the previous group as son of man and son of God. That is Reuben. Now, the next one to follow in the heels of Reuben, his name is Simeon and Simeon means all right Simeon means hear and listen intently so it is written behold the son hear and listen intently what are we to hear and listen so intently to the last one on the hills in this tribe is Gad and Gad's name means cut Messiah was pierced Messiah was cut Messiah had tribulation, right? So they're telling us we must listen intently to Gad. We must listen intently to the cutting of Messiah. And the southern camp is all about explaining that cutting. It's magnificent. It is so perfect. And we are journeying in a type of, of time clock of God. We are journeying in, in a type of compass to the north given to us. By God, helping us to know and follow Messiah. It is so perfect. And it's so wonderful to think that these people were, when they're sleeping, when they're walking, when they're awake, they're proclaiming this testimony to mankind. God is speaking through his Jewish people and he's blessing them and he's blessing mankind through them. It's the most perfect testimony. Now, every, we've listened now, we know that the camp the camps, as you watch them, if you watch them rise up and go by, you would have heard the sentence, Behold, listen carefully to the cutting. Okay, that's what they're saying. Now, there's greater detail because they are also the, the, the sons. They are also the captains of each of these three camps. They have particular prophetic names and they appear in a very specific order because God is writing a sentence in them as well. So the captains, as they appear, are testifying again helping us with knowledge of Messiah. So when these captains' names are calling, when they you see them go by, they are spelling something, like watching a formation of people spelling and moving and saying something in their movement. They are crying out Messianic testimony. So the first captain's name is, My God is a rock, a rock burdened with calamity, with distress because of, the swearing of an oath. What oath is this? It's the covenant oath. All right. It is. My God is a rock, but the rock is having calamity. The rock, rock is having terrible pain and tribulation because of an oath. It's magnificent. All right. 
What oath? It's actually in the very next father to follow this one's heels. Who is he? He's Shalumiel. And what does that mean? It says the oath is unbreakable. The covenant. The oath is complete. It is full. But it is a vow that has to be paid. Because the oath seeks fulfillment. Okay? It is the perfect recompense. It is a reward. And it's also got the association with being at peace with God. That's the reward. It's all in Shalumiel's name. So what have we here? Okay? We have God making an unbreakable vow, therefore becoming the rock in calamity. The rock in terrible pain and anguish. Because God made a vow. God made a covenant with Abram. And he is to fulfill it by himself. Beloved, go back, think about Genesis 15. Do you remember the cut animals? Right? The cutting the, the, the death of those animals and the fire moving through them and God doing that by himself, not the way they used to do it in those days, Pe both people walking through there. It was only God's fire moving through there. God fulfills his covenant by himself. The rock is having this tribulation and the cutting. Why were the animals three years old? They were three animals three years old. Why? Messiah's ministry was three years old when he was cut. And we'll hear more about this in, in the incredible prophecy. But God swore by himself that he would make that covenant. He can't lie. So therefore, he burdened himself with the fulfillment of the covenant. Why did he do it? Because we are so fallible and we can't do it. He's doing it by himself for us through Messiah, the sent one of God, son of God, son of man, as the East has testified. So we have... The last father appearing, and his name is Elihasaf, and he's saying, the Lord increases and adds. And of course, after the covenant, right after the, the fulfillment of the covenant, that is how God brings in a multitude of people, right? From the east and the south and the west and the north, they're all gathered in from all the corners of the earth. Not only the Jewish people, but also the Gentiles are blessed in this covenant because God promised Adam and Eve, we're all the offspring of Adam and Eve. But we do it through Messiah and through loving God, the only God and Messiah, the only way. Right? You don't come in through apostasy. But it's incredible how God is bringing the multitude and he promised the fulfillment, in, 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 he promised to, to Abram that he would bring in this great multitude and that he would bless all people through the line of Abram, Isaac and Jacob. And of course he did, because Messiah would be born through them. And here he's doing it again. He's blessing us with the testimony that he placed in the mouth, in, in the formation, in the sleeping and the rising of these people. They're saying what we need to know. It is perfect. And God is letting them do it even in blindness. They didn't realize what they're saying, more than likely. It's, it's, it's breathtaking. Okay. So let's look at the captains once more to hear what they're saying, because they're saying something profound. They're saying, God is a rock. My God is a rock, a stronghold, a burdened himself with calamity and distress for making the covenant, for swearing an oath, an unbreakable, complete vow that he wants to pay, that he must pay because he's true to himself. That's why he's doing it, because of himself, because he's so true to his word and he can't lie. And he loves us. So he's bringing the oath to its fullness. And that implies him, the rock, going into calamity. All right? Distress because of the covenant. He will keep his vow and he is true. So the covenant vow results in him, all right, in the Son of God, the Messiah, being cut. It is the perfect recompense to God because he took our punishment now because he has done, he's paid the price. We are clean we are able to stand before God in the previous video is spoken about how they said that it's a type of bandage a covering that we have received through Messiah and it gives us the reward of being at peace with God peace comes through the Messiah beloved not through anything else peace does not come through false uh, uh, apostasies peace does not come through our uh, making uh, 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 disregard for God in terms of brotherly love Peace comes through Messiah. So here we have this reward of peace that we gain through the rock that received tribulation. And then the Lord is adding and the Lord is increasing and the Lord is bringing in anyone who wants to follow Messiah from all across the world in a mixed multitude. 
So the captains are declaring the cut Messiah to be the covenant fulfillment sign, all right? God being true to his word, bringing this great reward, peace with God. Now the fathers carry on, okay? So after the captains, we've got the fathers, and they say even more that ties with, with this. The first father's name is Shadir, and it means casting fire. Do you remember the covenant? Do you remember the fire going through the cut halves? Do you remember Psalm 22, where it's written that the Messiah's bones would be melting, having this fire? Messiah, the rock under flame, Messiah receiving the judgment of God, all right, in his cutting, in his death, the covenant moving through those halved animals who were three years old. Messiah's testimony was three, it's him. It's the rock under fire. He got the flame. He's took, taking the punishment in our place so that that's not you. Beloved, you've got reason to praise God and fall on your knees. He took the fire, the, the destruction, the judgment, and is the light. The name Shajir means the fire, the judgment, but also being the light of God. He is the light of God. That name ties to El Shaddai, ties to Shaddai, which is the holy name that was given to Abram. All right, so there's this holiness, the holy name. The holy name is having the fire of God, the judgment of God, but it's also being the light of God. It's incredible. And in the process, the name also means a breast, a being a pasture, the green pastures to the flock. What is this? God, through Messiah, we have the light of God coming to us. He took the fire of God, the punishment for us, so that he could be the breast of God. Give us milk, because the breast, breast milk, a baby is fed from a breast, we live by him. Because of what he did in taking the fire that we don't have to, because of ministering to us, we can live. We have the milk. We need to drink the testimony of Messiah like a baby and live. We are also in the image of being shepherded by him. We can feed his truth and live by it. He is bringing us this. It's all in the name of this father, Shadir. God is great. All right. It's followed by the next one is Zuri Shaddai. Again, we have the name, the tie to El Shaddai, the name of God being woven in here in this testimony. The name ties to God's name. It also means God being burdened, being burdened, being visited by calamity and being having, um, be, being lowered. But again, all right, being lowered, being subdued, being in travail, but again, being abreast, being the word that feeds. It is Messiah. It is incredible. God has burdened himself with our redemption because of the covenant that he made with Abram, because of that unbreakable promise. He then took our punishment. He is the, the rock in travail. He received the calamity destined for us. And in the process, he is being our breast milk. He is our nurturing. We have this image of a loving mother breastfeeding. It's God's love to us. In this, in the in the rock having the piercing, in the rock having the fire, in the rock having the travail, we have perfect meeting of the justice of God with the love of God. God is just, therefore he cannot change his word, therefore he does not lie, therefore God cannot say, oh, okay, Adam and Eve, oh, just, just write off, just forget, all right? The, somebody's got to die because God said the punishment for sin is death, his ultimate justice, but God is also ultimate love. And that is what Satan forgot, all right? He tried to outwit God there, but it, it failed terribly because God is perfect love and perfect justice. So he took the punishment because he loves us. Isn't that perfect love? It's perfection of our God. We have no idea how loving he is. And he took it on himself. He burdened himself. He became the rock having the piercing, the rock having the cutting, the rock having the fire, the rock under calamity because of the oath, because of the covenant that he made, because he does not lie. Our God is magnificent, right? And we have the ties here with the, the holy name of God that's also helping us in understanding messianic, right? the messianic prophecy. And you'll see it's being spoken by the tribes as we move through to the rest of the testimony. It's perfect. 
Okay. Then the next father's name again ties with the identity of Messiah. And he says the name Ruel. Ruel means being intimate with God, having deep knowledge of God. That's Messiah. All right. Incarnation of God is written in the name Ruel. So it's Messiah's identity that is given to us. The rock receiving the fire the one that is intimate, the one that's incarnate of God. So it adds to what the East have said. The East declared him to be the son of God, the son of man. The South is saying the incarnation of God, the one of God, the God making his covenant by himself. God, the rock, receiving the fire, being the light of God, being just, but being love. All together in perfection, incarnate of God. It's incredible to breastfeed us life. Because that is what God is doing. He's giving you life, although you deserve it not. Because of his identity, because of his covenant oath, because of him being just, because of him being truth, because of him being light, because of him being love in a measure that mankind can't comprehend. That is why he is God. Wow. Wow. All right. And then we have the combination in the South. Right, the south declaring the cut Messiah as being the fulfillment of the covenant and God doing it by Himself. So we have, if you if you start seeing that formation as they start to move by in the southern camp, you have first the the listing of the the tribal name, then the captain, then the father, and then the next group because there are three tribes in one uh, of the southern area. All right, the southern camp, and it's first uh, tribe. A captain, father, tribe, captain, father, tribe, captain, father. If you read it in that order, as it is given in the Bible, you hear a sentence that rocks you, okay? It is the sentence uh, that starts with seeing, hearing the name Reuben, which cries out. Cries out. First he passed by, it cries, behold the sun, all right? Then comes the captain, okay? So I'm not going to interrupt each time now to announce the person, Okay, but imagine them passing by. It is Reuben. Behold the son, our rock, our stronghold that burdened himself with calamity and distress, our Messiah, because of an oath swearing, receiving the fire of God, receiving judgment, the flame of God, but yet being the light of God, being the breast of God, the pasture of God to you. Listen intently to what? To the unbreakable covenant promise of God. You find it in Genesis 15. Listen that he made a vow that he has to pay. And he's doing it by himself. To bring peace between man and God. It is Shaddai that burdened himself. Being visited by calamity. Being subdued. Being the pasture. The breast of God. God is love. All right? It's his identity. He is becoming cut. He dies why? He goes down in his deathbed to bring forth, because he's stronger than death, he's the strong man, all right? To bring forth, to add in, to bring a great multitude, us, you and me, to stand before God as people from God, being gathered in from Jew and Gentile alike through Messiah, the covenant fulfillment promised to Abram. He is intimate with God. He has knowledge of God. He is incarnate, incarnation of God. In Messiah, God has manifested the ultimate justice and ultimate love in the perfect combination to free us, to breathe life once more into us after completing his works. All right. It is due to his identity as God, who is just, who is love, who is true to his covenant promise because he swore the oath. He did it by himself. The East all right, we've spoken about the first group that started. The East has declared his majesty. They lead in, they identify the Messiah to be the son of God, the son of man, humbled, born in a small town, bringing a great reward, heaven, after a sacrifice of sorrow. They identify Messiah to be the strongest one, the unstoppable Messiah, and he is that. Next, follow on the hill south, 
and they proclaim the cut Messiah. They urge us to listen to the prophecy of the covenant, the prophecies of the cutting, to remember the covenant oath that God swore to do by himself. They explain Messiah as covenant fulfillment, as having the flame and the light of God, being in, in, in incarnation, in oneness, in, in um, having intimate knowledge of God, being the, the manifestation of the justice and the love and the glory of God, nurturing mankind like a baby to a breast with a testimony of redemption promised by God in his covenant that he burdened himself with as our rock having calamity. God cannot lie. He burdened himself to bring the fulfillment of that covenant by himself. After the south, we find the Levites, all right? The Levites were resting with the tabernacle in the midst. And the Levites have got this incredible prophecy of being joining in. Joining and there's associations with borrowing and the prophecy of the coiled crown. In Levites, we have, we must be joined in through Messiah. We must, Messiah is taking our place. He is wearing that coiled crown and we saw him standing about 2,000 years ago. He was standing there with the coiled crown in his tribulation. It's his cutting and deathbed that he entered into to save us and we are joined in through him. We must have the borrowed man. It's all in the name of the Levites and also what the Levites were actually doing. They were standing in for the firstborn who was freed by the blood of the lamb over their doorposts when they started leaving and entering into the Exodus journey from Egypt. All right. They have the prophecy of being standing in for somebody else, just like Messiah. They prophesy him. He is taking our place. So we find that prophecy in the Levites taking the place of the ones that's freed from death. Okay, it's incredible. We are joined in through him, all right? And then we can tabernacle, we can rest with God. So we find them here in the midst before moving on to the multitude that is gathered in through the cut Messiah. All right, after Messiah was cut, the testimony went to the Gentiles. The testimony of the cut Messiah, because remember the covenant, remember that what the South says, you have to remember the covenant. The covenant said that the people of the world would be blessed through God and the Messiah, He'd bring in this multitude, and he did it, all right? And it's even seen in the name of Ephraim. Ephraim was of mixed blood, and it's the testimony of, of Messiah went to the Gentiles after, in, in, after the death of Messiah. And he promised to do that. Remember, God is being true to his word. He, he brings in a great multitude. And Ephraim's name means to add, to bring in this multitude. Because it ties with being fruitful. It ties with being a harvest. Um, it's a child of mixed blood, compiled of Jew and Gentile, gathered in through the cut Messiah prophesied by his father Joseph all right Joseph Ephraim's father has extreme prophecy of Messiah written into his life and in the southern camps after the testimony of the cut Messiah we have the gathering in all right and what is so wonderful when you see this the next camp is the north when you see the gathering in and it's been happening for the past 2,000 years we're heading this way Right, these people are here already. It's the Christian people and the Messianic Jewish people from all the four corners of the earth. They're being gathered in. The next stage is here. Okay, God is great. The harvest is coming in. The adding of the multitude follows the cut Messiah, and it has. Messiah was cut almost 2,000 years ago. We are here. Right, and what is so magnificent, even more, if you think of of uh, a, a, a watch all right if you think of a watch what is here okay if you think of a combination between a watch and a compass what do you see what what, what do you see here it is the time of nine o'clock if you think of a watch in combination with a compass it is the ninth hour that you see here just before going to 12 and Messiah went on the cross on the ninth hour and he entered his tribulation towards his death 
in the end time wise, there's a prophecy that we read in Revelations and also in Matthew 25, Messiah spoke thereof with the wise and the foolish virgins, that there is tribulation coming in testimony of Messiah's cutting, all right? That's given once more before the world, before he, we end up in front of him in judgment, okay? So we find that the prophecy of the cut Messiah is given in end time, and they will be having tribulation. There's almost a reenactment of end time Christians, end time Jewish people, and one uh, of them is tied to the witnesses of Revelation, the coming Elijah, who would be dying and rising. It is the, the, the death hour starting, the tribulation hour starting. This group that's been gathered for 2,000 years since the death of Messiah is going into the hours of tribulation. It's already started. There's already Christian persecution. It's always been across the world, but it's going to escalate tremendously as the final time comes. And you can see that it is in the prophecy of the sons of Jacob as well. It's the final closing of those following the testimony of Messiah because they love God and Messiah so much that they will not let go of his testimony even to the point of death. It is incredible and we will be moving towards the Western camp, the mixed Jew and Gentile alike in following Messiah and following God, all right? Not serving others. And they go into the ninth hour. They go into tribulation because of love. So who are they following? They are following, they are following their rock, all right? Who did enter tribulation because of love? love it is no nobody hurting somebody else they are not persecuting other people god loves people that's why he's de doing this and the end time wise also right they don't hate other people they don't persecute other people but they are going to be hated and persecuted because of love for god and messiah and also for mankind because they are testifying the truth of messiah through whom mankind can be saved it's perfect perfect all right you can't let go of the name of Messiah and the name of God. It is incredible. And if you listen to what these fathers were saying in prophecy, to the incarnation, to the, to the Shaddai, to the rock having fire, to the identity of Messiah, son of God, son of man, being the incarnation of God, you see that name strengthening as we move on in the rest of the prophecy. It is incredible. Beloved, you can never let go of the name of Messiah. You can never let go of God and his commandments. We can't join in by letting go. That's not the way to bring peace. God loves us. So in the next video, we were speaking about the movement, the, the cry, the, the annunciation that comes through the mouth of the, of the West, of the Western camp, Ephraim. And as they journey, we will see, all right, because the last stop is the north. It is the gathering of the Jewish Gentile people. It is the final stop before heading to north, the throne of God and his heavenly dwelling place, where we will be standing before judgment, all right? We will be receiving our judgment, but because of Messiah, we have a bandage, we have a covering. In the next video, we will be speaking about what God has the West proclaim. It is so perfect. The, 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 the earth and the, the wind directions, the corners of the earth are shouting in our ears the wisdom of God in knowledge of Messiah so that we can live. God loves you. Please hear. Please listen. Praise God.